Hello, my name is Alessio Bernardelli and I'm the Science Field Development Officer for NGFL Cymru. I'm here today to show you one of the resources that I'm developing and uh, that I'm hoping that you will use in the classroom. The reason I'm uh, making a tutorial on it is that uh, this resource is a PowerPoint presentation which contains a macro that we found and a macro to be enabled takes some uh, tweaking to do in your PowerPoint. So let's open this uh, motor effect PowerPoint presentation and I will uh, try to explain what I mean by these macros and how you can enable them and eventually use them to create your own content, your own resources and make your PowerPoints interactive for your students. The first thing you want to do is to change the macro settings on your PowerPoint. And to do that, if you are using PowerPoint 2007, you need to click on the Office button up here and click on PowerPoint Options. Make sure your Show Developer tab in the ribbon box is ticked, like so. Once you've ticked that, you'll have a new ribbon up here which says Developer. Click on that, go to Macro Security, and then click on Enable All Macros. Click OK, and now you should be ready to go. But before your changes take place, you have to close your PowerPoint presentation and open it again. This will allow the macro security settings to change. So this is the resource, is a PowerPoint presentation on motor effect with a few interactive resources within the presentation. And in particular, I want you to have a look at this learning caterpillars section. As you can notice, there is a button to press which says show instructions. If you press that button, you are presented with some instructions on what this macro basically can do. And these instructions apply to any object that you find in this uh, slide of the presentation. Uh, so these uh, images here, these uh, icons and this writing, and also the caterpillar segments which are hidden now by the menu. So take a quick look when you open the resource at the menu and see what you can do. For example, if you press Alt and then click on any of these objects which has the macro assigned to them, you can input the text in the object. If you click the instruction button again, the instructions are hidden. So one thing that you can do is to drag the segments to create your learning journey. So if I click on this segment, I can add it to the body of the caterpillar. And if I press Control and click on the object, I can now enlarge it to make it a little bit bigger if I want to do so. Press Alt and click on the object and you can now write inside the segment. So for example, your students might use this resource to say that at the beginning of their learning journey they were looking at magnetic fields. And if you click OK then the object will be edited here. Now if I enlarge it a little bit, as you can see, the magnetic field words now fit inside your object. But also they might think, well, we were looking at magnetic fields in wires. So click on the wires icon or image and drag it where you want, near or on the segment. So what were the thinking skills that were used in this uh, first part of the topic? Well. The children now can use the icons here or the words to describe what kind of thinking process they were using in this first part of the activity. So, for example, they were 
probably observing magnetic fields created by different objects like a wire carrying current or a bar magnet and so on. Then you're ready to add the next uh, caterpillar segment and we can add it perhaps up here and start the process for the second part of your learning journey. The pupils might have at this point listen to each other's ideas as to how these uh, magnetic fields were formed and for example someone might uh, come up with the observation that a flowing charge was always involved and that could be one idea that came from the group. Now this is just a very short demonstration on how this learning caterpillar works but let me take you out and show you how you can use this macro and assign it to any object in your Pivot Pro presentation to make them more interactive. So welcome back to the edit view in the PowerPoint. You can now add any object and assign this macro to them. So click on insert and for example let's choose this rectangle. We've drawn a rectangle on the screen now. By selecting the object and then clicking on action in the insert ribbon, make sure you tick run macro, drag and drop and now your object it behaves exactly like the other objects to which you have assigned the macro. You can now rotate it, move it and you can edit the text inside it. So by using this PowerPoint template that you will very soon find on the NGFL Camry website, you can basically create any PowerPoint presentation and make it interactive for your students to enjoy and to enhance their learning. So thank you very much for listening and a goodbye from NGFL Camry. Bye. <laughs>